Hello everyone, welcome to another session with AggieCon 5740. Today we're going to be discussing price indexing, a very important tool that we use throughout economics in a number of different settings. One of the eternal questions of humanity is whether or not we're doing better today than we were last week, last year, or during our parents' or grandparents' lifetimes. How do we know that households and humanity, for that matter, are better off with regard to consumption? This is, this is a leaflet from the 1952 elections produced by the Republicans in New, York, New Jersey. We don't know their methods, but we, they are asking voters to consider their standard of living and income. Comparing their income requirements before World War II to what they are now. People care about their purchasing power. Price indexes offer a means to measure whether people are able to buy as many goods today as they did a generation ago or last year. The objectives of this podcast are to first, define general uses for price indexes. Second, define the posh and l'esprit price indexes. Third, to identify data needs and uses for the posh and l'esprit indexes. And fourth, to relate price index measures to revealed preference determination. Price indexes allow us to look at shifts in prices across time and determine whether bundles of goods are more or less affordable over time. This may aid governments as they develop policies with regards to minimum wages, taxation, and subsidies for certain goods. They are used for international comparisons of well-being between countries. Within a nation, they may be used to see if different segments of society, such as different ethnic groups or the elderly, are faring better or worse than other areas of society over time. As this cartoon illustrates, the Federal Reserve monitors prices and consumer purchasing power when making considerations related to money supply and interest rates. Let's first look at a general price index. Different groups and organizations may develop a price index to compare prices over time using weights on different goods and services such as this. We see we have the price in the current period, that's time t, weighted by a weight for the first price, that is some weight, weight w1, and for the second good, it is some weight w2. The sum of those weighted um, prices is divided by a base period price set by the investigator, and those are weighted by some w1 and W2. The different elements of this general price index can be determined a number of different ways. Today we're going to be looking at ones that look at certain goods and consumption bundles in different times, either the base period or time t. The two types of price indexes we will focus on in this lecture are the Posh price index and the L'Esprit price index. They are similar because they both use an amount of goods consumed by the consumer in the consumer cons consumer's consumption bundle as the indexes. They differ in their time orientation. The posh index uses the bundle consumed at time t as the weights. If you construct what if if you construct what I will call a backward-looking posh index. The period T is the current or re recent period and you are comparing it to the affordability of the current bundle in the past period or pa past period B. Here is the general definition of the posh price index. We have the posh index denoted by P subscript P is equal to, in the numerator we have the price of good one in time t times the amount of good one consumed x1 in time t plus the price of good two in time t plus the times, excuse me, x2, the amount of x2 being consumed in time t. 
That is divided by, in the numerator, we have a different price set. We have the price of good one in the base period times the price of times the amount, excuse me, of good one being consumed at time t plus the price of good two in the base period times the amount of the good two being consumed in time t. Suppose we wanted to know how prices of a set of consumer goods following the 2020 pandemic compare to those following the 2008 financial crisis. Then, we consider the composition of the average consumer's consumption bundle in 2020 and compare its cost using 2020 prices to the cost of the same goods in 2008. We would have a POSH index that looks like this, where we have the prices and amount being demanded and consumed all in the numerator set to the 2020 prices and demands, but in the denominator, our prices are the old base period prices, or those from 2008, and we're looking at what is going to be sort of the, the total budget spent if we were buying today's quantities, or the 2020 quantities, at the 2008 prices. More often than not, we tend to use indexes in a backward-looking manner, assigning a past period as the base period. However, long-term studies may look back even further in time, comparing changes to more recent base periods. Suppose you wanted to see not only how consumer welfare changed during the 2008 recession and the 2020 pandemic, but also wanted to know how those changes related to the 1998 stock market decline following the dot-com market crash. In that case, you may continue to use 2008 as the base year and see how the 1998 changes compare to that time. Then, you can use that information to compare it to the 2020 figures as well. You would compute the index from 1998 to 2008 or let me show you. So here we have the base here year is 2008. It's going to continue to be the base year when we have 1998 comparison prices. Instead of working with the quantities of period T as the price index weight, weights, an alternative is to use the base period or B period quantities as the price index weights. This method is referred to as Les Sprays price index method. And it is defined by this equation you see on this slide. Here we have L with subscript P representing the Lespre's index, price index. And then you will see in the numerator, now this is where we see current period prices appear for goods one and goods two. But then we are multiplying them times base period consumption, the amount consumed in the base period of good one and good two. This is divided by the numerator, which has the expenditure in the base period, both in terms of base period prices and base period consumption. A quick review of the literature in EconLit reveals that more often than not, Economists do tend to re rely on the Lespre's price index for consumption analysis. So this is an indication that this one, this appears in the literature about two times more than the Posh index. And part of this may be the fact that it's much easier to find that base period demand data when you're trying to work in, in the current period and then current period prices. Often we do not have demand data until a few years down the road. So this is one that is leaned on a little more heavily by economists. So this is what a Lespre's price index would look like if we were going to compare the effects of the economic downturn in 2008 to that of 2020. The base year quantities are used as weightings in the low sprays index, and so it becomes this, where we have the prices from now, we use our 2020 prices, or our most recent period prices, but everything else in the equation is base period prices. So we have 
month from 2008, we have our base period L for the prices and the quantity demanded in the numerator, and then what are you as used as quantity demanded, excuse me, the quantity demanded and the um, prices in the denominator, and also then the quantity demanded in the numerator. We can now um, observe that only data, the only data used in this from 2020 is the 2020 prices. So this kind of reflects why you may see this price index being used more in the literature. We can assemble the sprays price indexes as soon as we have the 2020 or T period prices available and don't have to wait for quantity demanded data, assuming we have access to the base period information. <clears throat> now, let's think about two different price, how, what the two different price indexes tell us with regard to revealed preferences. Varian proposes a new index to measure the total expenditure. This is just a general expenditure index. Here you will see, we're calling it M, and it is equal to what we have in the numerator is the exp current expenditure in the current period or T period of both the prices, using both the prices and demand information from that period, so the total amount spent now compared to the total amount spent in a previous period using the base period prices and demand information. Essentially, this price index is a ratio of the expenditure in period T to that in the pace period B. We'll call this the general M price index to compare spending using the Posh and Lespray's indexes. Recall from the weak axiom of revealed preferences, if you choose to consume a bundle of goods that are more expensive than a comparison bundle of goods, the goods you choose are revealed preferred to the ones you did not choose. Suppose you calculate both the M and posh indexes for a bundle of goods and find that the posh index has a higher value, which we see in this first line of equations. The posh index where you have the current period, it's, it's similar to the general M index, but you're using the current period um, or T period amount demanded in the denominator with base period prices. This can also then just be, if you take out the posh um, nomenclature in the M, this is what your relationship looks like in the lower level of equations. If we cross multiply these, we come up with a single line of, um, of expressions, and we can divide this index through by the current or T time um, prices and goods demanded and derive uh, this relationship where we have our base period bundle de de um, being bought at base period prices is preferred to the T period bundle defined at B period or base period prices. In other words, the consumer's benefit his benefit from consumption is greater for the base period good than the one that they could choose with that would be the equivalent bundle in time t. Thus, let me move myself over here. The base period bundle is revealed preferred at the base period prices. So let's look next at the Lespray's index. Lespray's index, we may also come to similar conclusions. Here we have the same situation where we have declared that, or are assuming that the um, Lespray's index has a higher value than the general expenditure index. So again, let's look at this. If we cross multiply, we come up with one line of expressions. This time, instead of dividing by the um, the goods raised uh, in, in the um, in the current time or time t, we're going to divide through by the expenditure from the base period, and then we develop or we derive 
this relationship where we have the base period goods at T time prices are preferred to the T time goods at T time prices. So again, we have the situation where the base period bundle is revealed preferred at T, but this time it is at T prices. You will find indexes in a number of different um, studies and used in a number of different ways throughout the economics literature. As I mentioned earlier, price indexes can be used within a nation to determine the effects of price changes on different groups. One group that is closely monitored is the elderly as they often receive a fixed income from Social Security and other pension plans. On pages 135 and 136 of the Varian textbook, the author discusses using price indexes to adjust pension plans for the elderly. It is very valuable to understand the indexing processes. Economists estimate indexes for production goods or inputs as well as consumer products. Here is an example of a chart of indexes for economies during the 20th century depression. You will see here that they use the at the top it indicates that the base year is 1920 well, that is where everything is equal to 1 or as it is often defined 100 and here we can see that if this is the base year in 1920 um, throughout the depression in the 1930s there was generally a decline in the United States in terms of what this is a production index in the amount of production compared to 1928 so, and again, this then it compares it to wholesale prices where we actually had, um, but this is just wholesale prices in France. And again, the index is 100 in um, 1920, and we see it, it declining quite a bit as well there. So, here are the top three things to remember from this vodcast. The Posh and Lespray's indexes differ in their use of base period and alternative period consumption bundles for index calculations. You can compare the value of the price Posh and Lespray's price indexes to a general expenditure index to find revealed preferred consumption bundles across time. And finally, number three, price indexes play an important role in informing citizens and government of their well-being based on past and comparative benchmarks. If you have any questions, please feel free to follow up on the class website or attend my virtual office hours. This is the end of this vodcast, and I hope you find a little humor in this cartoon as we end and also inspiration to keep on working through the assignments in the class. I look forward to talking to you again soon.